Welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. Today is diagnosing with Mike Day. It's been a while since I've done diagnostic work. The reason is, those of you who don't know, my car broke down in the last video. It was the Quarantine Cruise 35. I've never had to tow the car and here it is, me getting home from that cruise. Now at the end of that video, I did mention the symptoms I was having and I'm gonna regurgitate them for you. But since I had some time to think about it, I'm pretty sure it's the alternator. So those of you here for the first time reviewing how to troubleshoot an alternator, we're gonna go through those process steps today. I have not done them yet. So this is gonna be raw and hopefully it's the alternator if it's something else, we're gonna film that too. Now, let me go through the symptoms to help you guys out if you're going through the same thing. Uh, at the cruise, at the end of that cruise, I couldn't start the car. The engine would turn over, but very slowly. It sounded like starter heat soak. I did a video on that too, but sorry, over there. Now, um, I jumped the car. I had a little jump box, started the car on my way, merry way. So 50 miles into my journey home, yeah, it's 100 miles up, 100 miles back. The car started acting weird. Like I had no tack, like it's zero. RPM, granted I was in traffic, it was like five to 10 mile per hour traffic, but the engine was running. So um, the video before the quarantine cruise, I put port injection on the car and had to do a whole bunch of wiring. So I thought it was a wiring issue. I pulled over, engine's running, tampering with the wires, kind of sounded better, get back on the road. About a mile down the road, the car just quits. I pull over and I go to start the car and it's even worse. It's like a tiny click like a modern car would do when the battery's dead. So I automatically jumped to conclusions. I thought it was the battery. I get towed home, yada, yada, yada. Well, I had a few days to think about it, right? And the one thing that I typically do every time I go on a trip is I put it on my SeaTac, SeaTac, sorry, my SeaTac um, tender, right? And Two days prior to the cruise, we had done the port injection uh, conversion at Vitek. So I'd driven up there, driven back, again, 150 miles or something like that. I did not put it on the tender. Then I went to the cruise, 100 miles up, 100 miles back. The battery lasted that whole time. I have a yellow top Optima battery. It's a year and a half old. There's no way that that's bad. So that's what leads me to believe it's the alternator. So today we're going to troubleshoot the alternator to see what to look for. Now, number one thing, this is a one wire alternator. I'm going to show you what I think is wrong and what to look out for if you have a one wire. doesn't matter if you have a two wire, three wire, or an OEM alternator. We're going to go through some diagnostic uh, what to look for. Number one thing, do not do is the old school way of running your engine and taking the negative uh, battery terminal off the battery to see if the engine dies. Don't do that anymore, guys. There are too many modern cars, there are too many amps going on, too many things you can damage when you put it back on. So don't just don't do that. I'll show you what to look for here. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna jump in the car because my Phytech unit, my handheld, actually has a battery voltage meter in it. So we're gonna go look at that first. Okay, as you can tell, the car's dead cold. I haven't even tried starting this uh, since the incident, but here's the Phytech unit. So if you have a fuel injection, you can see at the bottom there, 12.6 volts. It's pretty handy. But if you don't have fuel injection, here's plan B. As you can tell, my battery's in the trunk. You can do this test on the battery with a multimeter. So there's basically the same reading, 12.54. Sorry, another glare, 12.55. Basically the same reading. That's plan B. I'll show you plan C. All right, plan C. Again, one wire alternator, just attach right to the positive terminal and let's ground it out. See what happens here. 1248, pretty damn close. So those are the three different ways you can measure your voltage. Now let's crank the car back on the inside and see what we read. So here's what we're looking for. When we crank the engine and the engine's running, this should this number should actually get up to 14 volts. That shows that our alternator is charging. So uh, let's give it a shot. Remember, I'm dead cold. See, I was dying. That's why I suspect the alternator's not charging the battery. 
could even rev it a little bit. It should be 14 volts. So uh, let's go check it out. So I have a painless perform. What the? That's actually pretty warm. Um, I'm gonna have to Google that because you guys saw dead cold. I had the engine running. Look, I can put my hand here. This is still, it's a little bit warm, but that was like 10 seconds. Anyway, this is pretty, pretty hot. Um, I'm gonna Google that. But anyway, this is a painless performance uh, wiring kit and there's two wires coming off of here and I can kind of tell it's a little dark and like black. I don't know if that's staining from the boot that was on here, but that's suspicious. Um, I need to Google why this is warm. This is very odd to me. Okay, I did some Googling on that hot alternator issue. Um, turns out that if your alternator is hot like that, it might not be grounded properly. So let's go check this out real quick. All right, so the premise of a one wire alternator is that it needs a ground path. It has to go, so this is grounded on this bracket that I painted, the engine's painted. I have all kinds of paint. So I'm kind of leaning towards that this is not grounded. So um, I ordered another alternator. Let me show it to you. Hey, yo. Yes, I ordered a new alternator and it is chrome. And those of you guys have been following the channel know I've been trying to get rid of my chrome. But the dilemma is a black one is like six weeks. I don't got time for that. So anyway, I get this alternate. It's also 160 amp. The other one I think is like 100 or 120. It's 10 years old. So I said, you know what? Just in case I'll order it. Ordered it, right? This one comes with a grounding strap on it. Can you believe this? Okay, so what I'm going to do... So I'm going to take this fastener out. I'm going to take this ground strap and put it on the other alternator that's in the car. And we're going to test this again with the proper ground strap. And speaking of ground straps, I got this motorcycle battery wire kit. And it has this perfect little strap in there. I'm going to use, per I'm just going to fit right there, ba bam, and attach to my uh, ground on the block. Perfect, right? So let's get to work. Oh yeah, look at how easy that went in. So we are grounded. Oh, I just gotta tighten this up, but let's test this out. Here's our starting voltage. So uh, God hates a coward. Let's go ahead and start her up. And hopefully that goes above uh, 14. No change. That means the alternator's bad. Oh joy. Got them out. Now first thing that we're noticing here is the OD of this pulley. See, this one's bigger than this one. Um, I'm so tempted to put this one in as is and do a side-by-side -side comparison. And actually I am gonna put, now I'm, I'm making a decision right now. I'm putting this in, but my fear is my belt is not long enough because I'm pretty close to maxed out with this pulley so if you make this pulley smaller the alternator has to go further out to get the same tension so we're gonna find out okay don't worry about it but the other thing I noticed watch this see how fast that stops and that one just keeps going I don't know if that means anything or not right um, engineering hat on more resistance here means, I mean, this is a brand new unit versus less resistance. Maybe there's a brush missing or broken. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, if any, guy, if any of you guys have an idea why there's a difference there in drag, like that one stops pretty quick. The old one just keeps going and going and going. So I don't know. I'm gonna throw this in, see if that belt's long enough. We're back in. And as I guess, look, this is as far as, tight as I can go with the alternator and this belt's way too loose however being daring I think at idle we might be okay so I'm gonna just idle it right, before I take that alternator off and change pulleys um, let's do this test so we're at 12.8 resting let's crank it up and remember before it dropped to 11 let's see what we can what we get Yes, much better. It's not in the 14s, but 
That is way better than the previous 11. You saw how it dipped. So I think the regulator kicked in and started putting more juice out. So that's what, that's very prompt. Oh, touch 14 right there. That's much better. Now let's change that pulley. Time to get this pulley off. Now, if, if you installed the March system before, uh, the way you get this on is just an impact wrench to, to get it on. But it's pretty simple because you're turning this way to tighten and you can hold on to the fan. I'm a little concerned. I've never taken one off before, but if I take an impact wrench to take this off, that forces the fan in the cutting direction. These are pretty sharp edges here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my old fan belt, it's not my new one, and I'm just gonna hold it and see if I can get enough friction there to impact it off. So uh, cross your fingers. Ah! Hey, it worked. Awesome. I actually don't know how much force that took. Maybe you can do it by holding it, but I wouldn't chance it. So now I can take the other alternator off and get that pulley off, do it again, reinst and then pull this pulley off. Oh yes, it does come off. Okay, I didn't need a I don't need a pulley puller, so that's good. All right, and the new one. Hey, it worked. Sweet. Oh, that totally comes off easy. Two pieces. Oh, there's a spacer. All right, I'm gonna compare both alternators. I think I have to take the spacer off. Yep, so our pulleys are lined up correctly. And torque it back down, and I wanna just make sure that that uh, lock ring compresses. Looks good. Let's put it back in the car. There we go, all set to put back in. But I forgot to point out, this is a Tough Stuff alternator. They make the same one for March Performance. That's how I connected the dots. So that's how I know it's compatible with my bracket, but this is the new version, so it's 160 amp. And uh, now I can put it back in the car. All right, team, so we're not done yet because while I was Googling that hot alternator issue and remember that one wire that I found that looked a little toasty? Well, when you upgrade your alternator to a higher amp bridge, you also need to pay attention to your charge wire size. And mine's not big enough because there is a chart online. I'll try and find it and post it, but basically I need a six gauge wire. And Painless Performance makes this cool little kit. It has six gauge charge wire on it, uh, a bigger fuse, instructions on how to put it in. It doesn't matter if you already have a Painless Performance wire harness like I do, or you're just adding it to your system. It doesn't matter, you still need a bigger wire. So I highly recommend you do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm not gonna film it. It's gonna be complicated. I gotta pull the wire harness, um, tra trace the wires, etc., etc. I will quickly show you the before and the after, and then we can fire it up and make sure everything's working properly and go from there. So be right back. I realize it's difficult to see, but way under there, underneath the fuse box, is a 70 amp fuse for the original harness, and uh, that's nowhere near adequate because I'm going to 160 amp. Um, alternator so the new fuse is 200 amps so I get to dig around in there and trace some wires and I'll show you the result so a couple things before I show you the final fuse location that is the difference between 8 or 10 gauge and 4 gauge 6 gauge sorry, 10 and 6 so it's pretty dramatic um, I had to dedicate um, my covering for the wire which I also like it's the stuff from painless performance it's actually, you can actually put it over the wire like that. Gives it some added protection, looks really good. And the way you cut it, don't use a razor blade because it looks like that. Just use scissors. Bam, perfect. Let me put this in and I'll show you the final wire locations. Here's what we got. I put the new fuse holder right here and ironically, it 
that I had two existing holes. I think that's where the old regulator used to sit right here. I was able to utilize the two holes already in the firewall. Perfect. So now we have, this is the wire to the starter because my battery's in the trunk. So this is six gauge to the starter. I have zero gauge from the starter to the trunk battery. Then these two, this is from the alternator and also uh, the wire harness portion uh, for the main circuit breaker, main harness, and another um, eight gauge wire to the fans. 200 amp breaker right there. And this time I was able to peel out the alternator wire out of the main harness because the um, fuel injection system is in here. And it's always best to try and separate uh, any power lines from the fuel injection um, control lines because of uh, EFI. So we'll see. I don't know if that's going to work or not, but you know what the next test is. Let's fire it up and uh, test for the reading. And yes, there's a cap that goes on here just in case you're wondering. Ba bam. All right, here we go. First fire. There's the starting voltage, 12.8. Let's make sure we get up above 13, or hopefully 14. Oh, there we go. Let's get a little, little bit of a rev. Get the regulator going. 14s, baby. That's awesome. Now we're in business. Oh, and by the way, I found the... Uh, wire gauge chart. Let me show it to you real quick. All right, so a few things to note. One, uh, in the beginning of the video, I probably failed to mention when I got the car towed into the garage, I put it on the battery tender, and then the next morning, it fired up fine. So I kind of had right away, I was already on the path of it's got to be the alternator. So hopefully you, hopefully you enjoyed learning how to diagnose your alternator and I, I also misspoke earlier when i was talking about the wire gauges that indeed is an eight gauge eight this is gauge six and that mysterious chart i mentioned that i couldn't find it's actually in the instructions <laughs> so i came across it when i was googling the halt the hot alternator and by the way that usually means it's shorted so there's something wrong inside um, but here's a close-up where it says with a 150 amp alternator, you need six gauge wire. If you have a 200 amp alternator, you need four gauge. I mean, that's getting some, to some thick wiring. So just keep that in mind when you're wiring your vehicle. And uh, I hope you learned a lot today. So next episode, I get to go to the Good Guys show in Del Mar, which is just down the street from me. So luckily I got it running just in time because it's in a couple days. So I'm gonna film that, hopefully get some great ideas out of that show and uh, Another quarantine cruise, I'm sure, is around the corner. So stay tuned to that. Subscribe if you haven't. And you guys know the drill. Build them fast. Drive them faster. See ya.